Let's look at an example of complete induction. Here, we'll prove the Binet formula for the Fibonacci numbers. Before we get to the proof, let's give an overview of the Fibonacci numbers and the formula. Now, the Fibonacci numbers, okay, you may have seen these before. The first two numbers, F1 and F2, will define to be equal to one. Then to get successive Fibonacci numbers, we define them recursively. So the n plus first Fibonacci number is just the sum of the previous two. So that gives us, okay, we have one, one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, and so on. Now, using this definition, okay, you'll note, if I wanted the hundredth Fibonacci number, I'd have to compute Fibonacci numbers one through 99, so I could take the sum of the 98th and the 99th. Turns out, we have a formula that gets us directly to any Fibonacci number that we want. And this is called Binet's formula. So, using Binet's formula, the nth Fibonacci number is given by, okay, we're gonna take two numbers, phi one and phi two, we'll show those in a little bit, raise both to the nth power, take their difference, then divide by square root of five. Phi one is equal to one plus square root of five over two, better known as the golden mean. Phi two is equal to one minus square root of five over two. And you'll note, this seems like a pretty unlikely formula. Okay, we're expecting to get integers to come out of this always. Now, one consequence of the formula, okay, phi two, if you put that in a calculator, it's roughly minus 0.6. So when we start taking powers of this, this thing's gonna get closer and closer to zero. So the rule that we can use, if I want the nth Fibonacci number, I wanna take phi one to the nth power. Okay, we could treat this as zero. I'm just gonna divide by square root of five and then round to the nearest integer. So, for example, if I take F6, so I put that in a calculator, okay, I'm gonna take one over square root of five, phi one to the sixth power, I get 8.025. If I round, I get an eight, and that agrees with what we know for F6. For F12, okay, it's not on the list from before. Again, we compute one over square root of five, phi one to the 12th. I get 144.01. We round, we get 144, and that's gonna check out. Now, before we get to the proof, a little bit of preliminaries. So we're gonna need the fact that phi one squared is equal to phi one plus one, and phi two squared is equal to phi two plus one. Now, where does this come from? So you'll note, if I take the polynomial x squared minus x minus one, if I apply the quadratic equation, we get x equal to one plus or minus square root of five over two, which means that phi one and phi two are gonna be roots of this equation. So that would say, for instance, phi one squared minus phi one minus one is equal to zero, or phi one squared equals phi one plus one. For the proof, we use complete induction. The difference here, Instead of assuming that the previous statement is true in the induction step, we assume that all previous statements are true. So, statement I'll use here, P of n, for i between one and n, the Binet formula holds. We announce that we're using complete induction, then we have to show the base case. So here the base case is P2. That says that the Binet formula holds for F1 and F2, so we check. For F1, okay, we put one in for the exponents. I get one over square root of five, phi one minus phi two. We put in for phi one and phi two from the previous board. So that's gonna give me a square root of five over square root of five, which is equal to one. For F2, same idea. Now the exponents are equal to two. And I could use the previous board, which says phi one squared equals phi one plus one phi two squared equals phi two plus one. So we substitute, the ones go away when we take the difference, and what we're left with is the computation for F1. So again, we're gonna get a one. That shows the base case. We move on to the induction step. 
So here, I'm gonna assume statement PK is true. And we're gonna use that to show that statement PK plus one is true. Now, for statement PK plus one, I'm gonna to have to show the Binet formula for all i going from one to k plus one. By assumption, we have it for i going from one to k. So the focus is on statement PK plus one. So right here. Now, we'll start by just using our original definition. So f sub k plus one equals f sub k plus f sub k minus one. And this is where the complete induction comes in. If I had started with a normal induction, I would only be able to substitute for this piece, but because I use complete induction, I know our formula is gonna hold for both of these. We substitute using our assumption. Then we note, I can group the phi one terms together and the phi two terms together. When we do that, we can factor out a phi one plus one and a phi two plus one. And we know from the previous board, they're equal to phi one squared and phi two squared. When we put the exponents together, we'll have phi one to the k plus one, phi two to the k plus one. And now we have the formula, okay, Binet formula for k plus one. So that means the induction step holds. Thus, we have our proof by complete induction. Now, the big question is, where does the Binet formula come from? Okay, it's not a formula that we're likely to stumble upon by experimenting. It'll turn out that we'll have not just one, but two approaches to the Binet formula. So first is gonna come from linear algebra. We'll have power formulas of matrices when we learn how to diagonalize matrices. And a more straightforward way to the Binet formula is using generating functions. Both of these methods will give a good answer to why we need to concern ourselves with the equation x squared minus x minus one equal to zero.